So let's dive into the serve. So you've just uh, released a new serve course, um, and it's uh, about an hour of content, 20 videos. Uh, what would you say when you're coaching over the years? What, what are kind of some of the most common mistakes for, um, let's start with beginner servers. Well, I'll put beginners uh, in with intermediates because I find one of the biggest problems with beginners and intermediates is the toss. The toss. It's always, you know, it's, oh, excuse me, excuse me, you know, try, oh, excuse me, excuse me, you know, and you see someone just chasing this toss behind their left ear and catching it and trying it again. And that's one of the, one of the biggest faux pas I see in, in beginner and intermediate tennis is they just can't get the toss. And I think the problem there is that most people try to teach the toss separate from the rest of the body, right? Oh, put your racket on your neck here. And let it drop down your back. Now let's work on your toss. Yeah. Uh, and that's really the big problem because everything in tennis, if you understand this figure eight, you can see when one part of my body moves, every part of my body moves. Right. So trying to teach the toss in a static way where your arm is like a lever, a lever, you know, just going up and down, I mean, you're just going to be subject to your emotions, right. you know, your personal your personal limitations. Yeah. And, you know, and I have them, and everyone has some personal limitations, and, you know, that's when choking comes in, and, um, you know, and just your nerves, you know, you play the score instead of uh -huh. playing the ball. And I think uh, one of the big problems is people, in trying to toss, they're not considering their weight and, and this continuous motion. And I find if you take a step, and I put this in my one-minute clinic, if you take a step while you talk, then that sort of brings your left hip, right? You take a step with your left foot if you're a righty, and that brings your left hip out into the court a little with that step, and it brings your arm out into the court a little bit, and it stretches your body out. And right. plus... It's kind of like throwing a ball. You take a step and throw. So as you step, you're already unfolding into the serve. So not only does that little step, and you see Federer do it all the time, and uh, all the pros seem to do it. They, they, in the warm-ups, they all take that, a big step. Mm -hmm. I think they're just trying to loosen up and feel their, their whole body rotate. And uh, But it certainly helps to toss mm -hmm. because most people toss off the back foot, most beginners and intermediates. They toss while they're coming back. Right. So the toss is always flying behind them. Yeah. So if you take a step while you toss, then you'll find your toss kind of goes where you want it to, which is, you know, uh, just at the 45-degree angle, slightly to the right, just in front of you, right. or even slightly over your head, but, control, you know, if you want to hit a kick serve, but still controlled. It's very hard to control the serve, I mean, the toss, when you're just using your little muscle, like your arm. Yeah, that's, that's what's doing amazing. it. You're in big trouble if that's what you're depending on is a little muscle. So it's more like you step and that hip kind of pokes out and ri that left hip rises with the rising of the top of the hand. And it makes for a much more fluid toss. Uh, right. All my students warm up like that. I warm up like that. Mm -hmm. and, and it really helps. So I would say that's probably the biggest faux pas in, in serving. Yeah. And that comes from, or at least it seems to come from that, um, how most people are taught to serve, right? Point your racket, put your toe on the line, racket yeah. back on your shoulder, and then toss. So you're only doing one thing at a time versus right. kind of doing it all together in a fluid motion. Right. The funny thing about the serve is the less you, it's kind of like all your strokes, uh, at least with our method, the less you swing, the bigger the ball you hit. You learn to tighten your coil, right? So if I'm going to serve, my racket is right here, and I pull my body counter, right? And I start screwing down into the court, but leave my racket here. That creates tension. Right. So it comes. So now that it comes around a corner, right, I'm here with all this tension, and the racket starts to catch up. Then I switch, you know, in my figure eight, and you have all this tension. So by trying not to serve hard, by trying to hold tension on the contact point, you actually serve harder than if you try and pull your arm back. You might get more space and more distance to the ball, and that might logically feel like, oh, I have longer ways to get to the ball, it'll be harder. It actually works the opposite. Mm -hmm. The closer you are and you work your lower body to get tension, that's where you hit your hardest serves. So I remember when Lendl used to be asked about his serve, and he said, you know, that one serve you hit at 135 miles an hour, I'll never forget this. And he says, I do remember that serve. He said, but I remember right before that serve thinking, let's just be balanced hit a nice balanced serve. 
He said, I wasn't trying to hit a big serve. And that's really the way it goes. You hit your best shots when you let things that are supposed to be natural be natural. Right. And so I would say for, uh, for advanced players, that's probably the big, biggest faux pas there, is they try and get too much power in the backswing, right? Coming back, bending their knees deep, laying the shoulder way out like this. And, and that's not going to give you the biggest serve. It's better actually to have a smaller motion but a tighter coil, so more contra- you know, more of the hips fighting against the arm, creating tension at the contact. Right. If you understand that, that's it's you know not as easily said as shown. Yeah, well, hopefully people will go check out the course and they'll be yeah. able to un- understand it a little better. Um, yeah, yeah, and one of the things you you told me a couple weeks back, it might have been a month back at this point. Um, was the idea, and I guess this might be for more advanced players too, but was the idea of, of kind of pulling yourself up the rope? Um, oh, yeah, that's another thing. Uh, players, uh, if, if they don't have the problem of trying to get all their power in the back of the swing, right, the bending and the turning, and, and how far can they pull away from the ball, that's, that's one issue. The other issue is at contact, people, uh, they don't know if they're afraid to look at the ball, but they seem to yank their heads down. Sometimes I think... It's because they want to see where the ball is going, so they look into the court. They do that on ground strokes, too. Other times, it's because they perform the serve so incorrectly that they can't leave their eyes up. They're forced to look down at the ground or at, at, the, at the net, which is probably where the serve is going if they're looking at the net. You want to keep your eyes resting up on the ball as you make contact. And in fact, another good thing to think about is a relaxed face. You know, you want to keep a relaxed expression when you're making contact. If you tense up, you probably yank your head away. So, yeah, the idea I told you, that's right, about, about the left hand is as you let go of the toss, instead of just letting your arm come down or even pulling it into your chest, which is more correct, the best of the three ways is to not pull the arm in at all, is to pull yourself up. So, yes, I tell my students, and I do it myself, to imagine that you're pulling yourself up a rope. So you get that nice lower body, then the chest, you get that nice slinky effect going up into the hip, like a catapult. Right. And so, yeah, using that left hand to pull yourself uh, up the, the rope, like in gym. Yeah. That's a, that's a good thing to think about. So I'm glad that worked for you. It yeah, sounds like once, it. once you start doing it, you can feel the serves you do it right on and the ones you don't. Like, even before the ball clears the net, I hit it yeah. and I just, I feel it and I'm like, oh, that's a good one. And, um, yeah, that very next week I had... Uh, I think I had like seven aces in a match, which I never have that many. Like I've never had more than three aces in a match, I don't think. So huh. it's wor- it's working really well so far. 